Hey everybody, I'm the Rainbow Unicorn. I'm taking over for McKeith today because he's feeling a little down in the dumps. Get ready for optimism and happiness! What is this? Nothing, don't worry about it. Who are don't you? Don't worry about it. But no. You're... No. Go away. Please go away. This is the official first episode of Inside World of Warcraft. If you're watching, welcome! If you're not watching, screw you. Before we get going here, I'd just like to take a minute to acknowledge the accomplishment of one Christian German guy of Hamburg who recently reached maximum gold. That's maximum gold. He has so much gold that the game engine will not allow him to have any more gold. Let's just take a moment to reflect on that. If you're capable of remembering things that happened prior to your most recent Serpent Shrine Caverns raid, then recall that Blizzard at the end of 2007 posted in their class forums and asked people for input so that they could tweak and rebalance things for Wrath of the Lich King. I asked the other guys to plumb those uncertain depths and zero in on some of their favorite suggestions from you, the player base. And here they are. Blink is still broken. That really covers a lot of Mage's complaints right there. I mean, the game's been out since, what, 1997? And Blizzard still hasn't figured out how to keep me from blinking backwards? Or through the ground? People seem to think that dungeon factions should provide specialized portals, and that Mages should be able to cast while moving, and spell pushback should be completely removed from the game. Also, they should be able to shoot lasers out of their eyes. Finally, Pyroblast is effectively worthless without presence of mind. The shared cooldown on health stones and mana gems is irritating and pointless, and naturally, Polymorph should stop healing our opponents. I mean, I don't get healed up to full health while I'm running around feared, do I? No, I've usually got eight curses on me, and they're ticking me down to death while I'm helpless to do anything about it. Blow me. Shamans have no form of crowd control. At all. And when you consider the fact that they're forced to be overpowered on a daily basis, that's really not a fair trade-off. Give the poor guys some sort of crowd control, Blizzard. Maybe let them overwhelm their opponents into a catatonic state with the shining brilliance of their amazingness. That would be cool. You could call it, BASK IN MY GLORY! Make it a one-point talent in all three specialization trees. Shamans seem to think that totems need to follow them around. Maybe they carry them on their back, or in their shoes. Oh, and guess what? If you're an enhancement shaman, well, there's no gear for you in the game, so either run around naked or enjoy the hunter gear, and all the elementals can just go ahead and wear a dress. Threat doesn't really scale like it should. You know, DPS keeps getting bigger and bigger and higher and higher. And for us warriors, threat's pretty much capped. Also, shot durations suck. At most, they can only be three minutes, and that's if you have booming voice. And really, who the hell gets that? One of the biggest problems with warriors these days is that as we get better geared for tanking, which is, you know, what everybody tells us we should be doing, we lose the ability to generate rage. And without rage, we pretty much suck at tanking. Warlock pets scale poorly, and they're not useful in a group setting for anything other than the imp's stamina buff. Fell guards don't get any more health as they level up. Fell hunters sit around doing nothing unless they're spell-locking casters in PvP. And doom guards and infernals just plain suck and should go away. Also, it's funny that no matter what your spec and gear look like, you can't do any better for damage than to just sit there and spam Shadow Bolt after Shadow Bolt. Unstable Affliction is meant to do damage to people who remove it, but Pally Bubbles and Cloak of Shadows are immune to that for some reason. This is a 41-point talent, by the way. Pet pathing is still terrible. Daddy misses you, Twinkie. Traps need to be on separate cooldowns, you know, something like for fire, ice, nature. Disengage is like a poor version of Fain Death that never works. The different families of pets aren't unique enough, and ammo costs too much. At current prices, I can't even afford to shoot Blizzard in the face for forcing me to spec Beast Mastery and rely on a macro to compete on damage meters instead of just button mashing like a mage. Light Will is a 31 point talent, and it sucks. Fade needs to be more of an aggro dump. One heal can negate an entire fade. Power Word Shield just doesn't prevent enough damage for the amount of mana it costs to cast. Oh, and one more thing. Fear is too easy to break and resist. What's the point in fear bombing a group of guys if they're just gonna stop five feet away from me, turn around, and continue beating my head inside out? Rogues love combo points. Really, they're awesome. If we could accumulate combo points rather than giving them to our targets, that would really be sweet. Rogues also love daggers. At least, they do if you believe all the fan art that depicts rogues using daggers, 100% of the time. In reality though, daggers suck ass to use, and they're underpowered. Oh, and by the way, ass vanish is still throbbingly broken in PvP. Holy Paladins are an extremely boring class to play, with only two spells they can cast. Maybe toss them a heal over time or something, just for some spice. And I guess Holy Shock is underpowered, and needs a higher healing coefficient, or a decreased mana cost and cooldown. Or hey, why not all three? 
Retribution Paladins want less reliance on spell damage, and also badges that say God on them. Alliance Rep Paladins are jealous of Seal of Blood, and Horde Prot Paladins are jealous of Seal of Vengeance. Finally, I personally think that a blessing of spell damage would be a nice addition to the class. This may or may not be due to the fact that my main is a mage. Man, that took a lot longer than I expected. Those guys like to talk. One last thing, folks. There have been some exciting events in the World of Warcraft machinima scene lately, and probably the biggest was the arrival of Tales of the Past 3. It's the third one. A fella named Martin Falch went and spent like a year and a half making this thing, and then he posted it, and wow, did you guys like it. I mean, the reviews were... Amazing! High five, five, five! If I could give it a six, I would! Haven't watched it yet, but congratulations, it's fantastic! It's like having an orgasm on the surface of the sun! This movie is long. I mean, it's long. An hour and a half long. Do you have any idea how long an hour and a half is? It's like over an hour. And as of the time of this sentence right here, precisely 632,511 of you had downloaded it from warcraftmovies.com. Folks, I'm not buying it. There's no way 632,511 of you trained chimps sat still for 89 minutes and watched this whole thing. I was going to review it, but I cannot bring myself to watch it. It's so long! I mean, here, maybe if I, maybe if I fast forward or something, I can catch just the sex scenes. Oh my god. Oh my god! It's as if Martin Fouts were machinimating directly to me. It's like he knows me. I feel like if my ears and eyes were surgically removed while I watched this miraculous film, so that it would be the final lasting memory in the remainder of my wretched life of the twin glories of sight and sound, I could from that point on live a life of fulfillment, knowing that I had experienced the one thing truly worth experiencing. I don't need a job, I don't need a car, I don't need a wife and kids or a house with a white picket fence. I've got tales of the past three, and that's all I'll ever need.